Hello there and welcome to today's United Kingdom talk. My name's Chris Reardon. I do hope you enjoyed our show yesterday uh, with the Mayor of Lambeth, Christopher Welbeloff. I, I thought I really enjoyed doing that. Really did. And I must thank uh, the people at, Man at uh, uh, Lambeth Town Hall for kindly setting that up, actually. Um, uh, a lady called Man Mandy Plummer. And uh, she was the kind of lady that uh, set all this up for me uh, for our little chat yesterday. So I do hope you enjoyed that, boys and girls. Um, I have to say, uh, just going back to that yesterday, uh, I got there around about 20 minutes too early for the meeting. So I just sat in the reception area. And uh, while I was in there, I was very, very impressed with the receptionist in there. He was very pleasant to me. But I was, as I was sitting there, <clears throat> another lady came in, member of the public. And um, you know how you kind of <coughs> earwig other conversations, you know, listening to what's going on and what have you. And this lady, obviously I don't know her name or anything like that. So, I mean, you know, you, you don't know who I'm talking about here. She came in a little bit distressed and it turns out that the social services department have taken her children away and she's got nowhere to live and she's got no money and she was, I wouldn't say in a state, she seemed to be fairly calm and collected and she sat down there and what it turned out while I was sitting there listening, was that she was in the wrong town hall. Now, she's from the Southwark area, which is another part of London, and she'd gone in to the Lambeth town hall. And it would have been all so easy for the receptionist to say, no, nothing to do with us, go to your own one. Which she did in a roundabout way, but... This receptionist, and it was not her job at all to do this, sat with the woman for about 20 minutes, being as helpful as she possibly could. Getting together a, a well, not even just giving her phone number, she actually made phone calls to social services and various other departments in order to try and assist this lady, even though it was nothing to do with her. And I'm so impressed. I don't know the, the woman's name uh, on the reception, but I was just so impressed with the care and compassion shown to this woman. So, you know, big thumbs up there for Lambeth Council. I, I, I really do think so. I mean, list, listening to what was going on there, I found that really upsetting and sad. Can you think of anything worse than having your children taken away for whatever reason? And the whole conversation was very sad. This woman just didn't seem to have any hope. And had, didn't have a clue what to do. But she wasn't shouting and screaming or anything like that. She was quite calm and collected. And I just, I just felt so sorry for her. Yeah, I mean, big thumbs up to Lambeth Council for that. After the meeting, um, I went back to the tube station and on the way took a few more little pictures and, and videos of the surrounding area. And a, police, a policeman questioned me, boys, and goes, hello, sir, can I ask what you're doing? So uh, I told him. And I said, do you want to look in the bag? After I told him, I just done an interview with the mayor. He said, no, no, no. He said, that's fine. That's OK by me. No trouble at all, sir. Have a nice day and walked off. So that was quite nice. I mean, I don't mind that, you know, when the police question you, because I'm never doing anything wrong. I'm not. Honestly, dear. Oh, you make me out to be some sort of criminal here. <laughs> so that was quite nice. Um, and as I say, yeah, really good uh, and enjoyable show yesterday. Now, if you missed that one, the uh, Chatette interview with the Mayor of Lambeth, then you can find that by going to the main United Kingdom Talk website, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, and look for the show dated Tuesday, the 1st of December. Okay, once again, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, and look for the show dated Tuesday, the 1st of December. OK, now there's an email address to the show. If you want to join at any time, please feel free to do so. My email address is chris at 
www.unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Now, talking of the show, there is to be a live United Kingdom talk in a few days' time, and I'd love you to join me for it. It's not going to be on any radio station, okay? I will give you the web address for this in a few moments' time. Being live, you will be able to email direct in while the show's on, rather than now, as you know, this show is a recording, which I make a few days in advance. All right? Your emails are always, always read out on the show. But sometimes you have to wait a few days, maybe a week or two sometimes, for them to come out. With a live show, I can do this instantly. I can reply to emails, and you can also Skype in. You can Skype in, okay? If you've got Skype, you will be able to use that so, to call into the show. We might even have the phone line working as well, so you could phone in. Now, this will happen on Monday, the 7th of November. Uh, sorry, Monday the... Uh, was that the right date? Yes, yeah, Monday the 7th of um, December, so that's just a few days' time. And you will need this URL to watch or indeed listen to the show. You will be able to watch it as well. We've got a live little camera in the studio. I hope that all works all right. And the address you want for that is www.ustream.com forward slash united dash kingdom dash talk okay and that will be on monday the 7th of november at 6 p.m uk time or greenwich mean time now once again for that live show the first live show i've done for a long time i'm just kind of experimenting with this to see how it goes and to see if perhaps you're interested even in being able to join in live I think it could be much more fun. So once again, if you want to join me, Monday the 7th of December at 6 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, and you need to go to unite. Uh, you need to go to www.ustream. U S T R E A M. Ustream.com forward slash channel. C H A N N E L forward slash united dash kingdom dash talk and you want to be there on monday the 7th of december at 6 p.m if you if you join it before that which you can do so if you want to get ready or anything there'll be a little bit of music playing until uh, we come on at seven o'clock all right and we'd it'd be lovely to have you there and perhaps to join in live Okay, uh, we've got some emails building up, so I'm going to go straight on to those now, boys and girls. Uh, a couple of people, as I say, have been waiting a, a, a while. First of all, Suko in New York says, um, Gwen, Australia, birthday belated, belated birthday to Tom. She says, you wouldn't even know I'd gone missing since my fans keep my name alive on United Kingdom Talk. Wayne, Doug Akeley and Tom. <laughs> Suko keeps disappearing. Oh, by the way, I'm out in the garden today. Can you believe that? First week in December, and we are sitting in the garden. I haven't got a coat on. It's not particularly cold. The sun's in and out a little bit. It's a bit bright, so I've got my sun glasses in. I don't know if you can hear the wind. It's a bit windy out here, but we are having rather balmy weather here in the UK. Um, I'm very pleased to announce that my heating has still not gone on this year. It's not cold enough. It's wonderful. Oh, it is windy. I hope I don't have a tree come down on top of me, dear. Dreadful. Um, hello to Takasugu, who lives uh, quite close by, actually. I think he's in Guildford, who says, how very dare you? I was about to buy one of those hats that you mentioned, which hangs down at the back. Ha-ha! I think it looks nice. I'm sorry, ta uh, 
Takasugu. It does not look nice. It looks stupid. Don't buy one, for God's sake. They really don't look good. You may think they look good, but let me tell you, they don't. They do not look good at all. Don't buy one, my friend. Uh, he also says, but I do agree with you uh, about your chat where you mentioned cartoon pants. That's a few shows ago now. I was saying about how, how stupid some of these cartoon pants are. It's not so bad, I suppose, if they're on someone really young, you know, um, I don't know, below, below 12 years old. Anyone above that, you know, especially, especially men over 25, and they've got cartoon pants on. How stupid do they look? Get rid of them. Burn the pants and get yourself a nice pair of white briefs or shorts, for Christ's sake. Get rid of these cartoon pants. They don't look good. Um, he also says, I always see them in Topshop. Oh, you're not going to buy a pair of those, are you? Good God. Please. Let's get a little bit more sensible with our clothes, shall we, boys? Hello to Wayney, who's not in Reading who says, I've just been watching your Saturday the 21st of November show and you mentioned about hats. But I'm not sure if you realised that each of the hats that you showed on your show have worn away your hair. <sighs> to the point where you can see skin... <laughs> skin coming through and then you started to show your bum to the camera that's okay but where did you get the wide loan so load sign from because i need one for my minibus what are you saying i have actually noticed how these hats have worn away my hair thank you so much wayney for pointing it out as you always do when you find something wrong with me thank you so you love it don't you what is it with people that love to point out the faults that other people have? I mean, you never hear me doing that, do you? Never in a thousand years, dear. The cat's sitting next to me now. Oh, all right, Katie. She was sitting on my lap at the beginning of the show, but she's disappeared now, down to the bottom, she's sitting on the news. But why do they sit on newspapers, cats? They like sitting on newspapers, don't they? Hello to Nick Donaldson. Now, this uh, message arrives via Facebook. Who says, greetings, Chris, and everyone else. I just wanted to send a quick note to say that I'm really enjoying United Kingdom talk. Also, I wanted to thank you for all the other podcasts you refer to. I've started listening to ones like Ross Pat Zelt and Tom Harris. They are all good shows. During your show... You invite people to send in their photos and videos. Yes, I do. But do you know what? No one does. Isn't that strange? No one has sent me any... And I've been asking for a, oh, quite a, maybe a month or so, a couple of months now. Um, no one has sent a single photograph or video in, which I find a bit odd, really. When I've asked before, people have sent stuff in, but they haven't done this time. Is it because... I said to you I was going to play it on the screen which is behind me when I'm up in the studio. Obviously not today, I'm in the garden. Is that why people just don't want their face perhaps to be associated with such a down market programme as this? <laughs> is that what it is? <coughs> um, Nick says, I've got a few videos I shot of firework displays I've attended in the last few years. Each one's about 25 minutes uh, long or so. Now, that's good. I mean, it must be quite hard, I would have thought, to shoot a firework or, or film a firework display, isn't it? Do you have to have special lenses and all that? Especially, like, with a lot of the cameras, including the one I'm using today, have got auto-focus on. And I think with a flash, it would keep going... Surely it would keep going out of focus, wouldn't it? He says, would you be interested in having those or part of those as backdrops for the show? I certainly would, yes. If so, I'd be more than happy to share them with you and all the viewers. Uh, and that's from Nick. Hello. Uh, thank you, Nick. Yes, I really would, actually. Um, not quite sure how you're going to get them to me because video, video files 
are quite large, but I think there's a site called sendit.com, okay, www.sendit.com, okay, and on that site you can send large files to people for free. So I, th I think that's the correct URL. So do have a little look at that, and uh, I think we'll be able to um, uh, receive your files and have them playing on the back in the background when I have my um, uh, when I'm in the other studio for the people that watch the show uh, to have a look at. Okay, don't forget the email once again, boys and girls, if you want to join in. Chris at UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. Now Millie in Minnesota writes, "Hi, Chris." I must correct you on something. Oh, we do like a bit of correction, Millie. We really do, darling. You said, I don't write to you anymore. Well, you're wrong on that one. I've been writing to you regularly again for quite a while now. Yes, I realised that for a while I wasn't writing on a regular basis, but had nothing to do with you. It was simply because I had no interesting stories to share. Oh, I'm sure you do, Millie because you are an interesting person, my dear. I'm sure you have lots and lots of interesting stories to share with us. Keep them coming, lovey. Happy stories, Millie. That's what we want, happy, happy stories. She says, however, that doesn't mean I've stopped listening or watching the show. I still continue to do that, and I do now. Motorised Millie isn't going anywhere. You're stuck with me. Why is that? Is your batteries flat, darling? Have, you, <laughs> have, you, have your wheelchair batteries gone flat? Is that why you're going nowhere? Charge them up to you. Plug them in. Eh? Actually, talking about plugging things in, when I went to see uh, the mayor a couple of days ago, um, I parked in a car park in uh, Richmond. And for the first time, I saw one of those electrical charging points for cars. And the very first time I've seen one of those, there was only one in the entire car park. And uh, there it was in the corner. There was no car parked or plugged in there or anything like that. And I think you've got to have a special card or something to, to, to access this. And it's just basically, it's just a post. It's just a small post about, I don't know, about four foot high, five, four or five foot high. And you plug your car into this and, and let it charge up for four hours. But I thought to myself, you know what vandals are like? If you've got your car plugged into one of these, now I assume that you'd have to have a wire going from your car to the charging post, wouldn't you? Well, surely it must be easy for someone to just come along with a pair of scissors and snip the wire in two. I mean, that's the sort of thing people do, isn't it? Just awful people would do that sort of thing. Um, which is mad, really. Uh, the reason I drove, I actually drove to Richmond, parked the car there, and then got a train and a tube um, for the rest of the journey to Brixton. And it's just fantastic. I, I, I've always loved trains, always. I used to go to school, uh, London Oratory School in Fulham. And part of the journey was by a tube train between Putney and Fulham Broadway. And I always loved getting on the train, always from a young boy. And it was just so fantastic and fast to go all the way from Richmond to Brixton. First of all, part of the journey on a tr train, part of it on a tube. The whole, ho the entire experience took about half an hour. And to do that journey by car during the daytime, I would say would take you at least an hour and a quarter through the traffic because it's terrible, terrible traffic. I was particularly uh, impressed with the very last part of the journey, which was uh, a tube train at the Victoria Line between Vauxhall and Brixton. And it's really fast. I don't know how fast <laughs> that... I, I think he was late. I don't know how fast that tube was going along in the tunnel, but it felt like about 70 mile an hour, dear. And I thought, what if this comes off the rails? And where is these tubes? The, the, the tube and the tunnel seems to me to be a bit of a quite a tight fit. You know, just a few inches either side of the train and above the train. So I thought to myself, well, if it does jump off the track, there's not really anywhere for it to go. You see what I mean? 
Yeah, if it, sometimes, you know, you see awful, awful stories about trains becoming derailed and rolling down a hill and people killed or, or damaged in some way. If a tube train was to jump off the tracks, I don't think much would happen, would it? Because those tunnels are so tight fitting, you know, there's nowhere for it to fall off. You see what I mean? And it's ever so fast, this tube train. One thing I did notice was how hot it was down there. Now, I know in New York you have air conditioned trains. Unfortunately, here in the UK, they, they tried to find ways of cooling, cooling some of the tube trains down because they do get extremely hot. Now, I've, I've been fortunate enough never to have actually been on a tube train um, uh, during the summer when it's hot because apparently it's quite unbearable. It's really hot. We can't, they don't seem to be able to find a way, not, not on all the lines, but on a lot of the lines, including the Victoria line, I don't think they can find a way to actually install air conditioning because there's just no space on the train. There's no space above it, you know, between the top of the train and the roof. There's just no space. So it was, was, wasn't incredibly hot, but I did notice how hot it was uh, once we were on the train there. <clears throat> anyway, back to, uh, so, so a fantastic way to get around London. If you ever come to the UK on holiday, and I've said this many times before, and you're coming to London, do not hire a car. You'll be wasting your time hiring a car. You won't be able to get around easily, and it will cost you an arm and leg to park all the time. Do it all by public transport. Buses and tubes are our tube network here. Although a little bit dirty sometimes, it works well. It does work well, and the trains as well, okay? Millie says, I'm glad you finally booked your ticket to Australia. About time too. She says, you work entirely too hard and deserve a bit of time for yourself. So says Millie. Yeah, you're not the only one, Millie. My mum always said that. Even from when I was about, I don't know, when I was, when I was 16 and I got my first job in a, uh, a supermarket and a camping shop, Millets in Putney. And she always has said, I work too much. But there, that's just me, I'm afraid. That's how I am. Take good care of yourself and give my love to the Belushi staff and to Gwen when you speak with her. Of course, a big bunch always go to you as well. Lots of love from Millie. So nice to hear from you, Millie. Thank you, my darling. Um, oh, another email here from Wayne. I've put these actually in date order, you see, uh, because we have been falling a little bit behind with the emails. And uh, Wayne, not in Reading, says, in uh, one of your previous shows, you mentioned, where have all my regular correspondents gone? Yes, it all, got, it all went a bit quiet for a while. I was concerned, boys and girls, concerned. What's that? Is that you? What? I just felt a little sprinkle of water come down on me then. What on earth was that? Oh, here comes the cat. <laughs> She's back up on the lap. Um, Wayne says, well, I'm not meant to tell you, but we're all watching and listening to New York Talks with Suko Sullivan. Is this such a show, dear? I think you're making it up now, Wayne. It's great she reads every email with great care and attention and doesn't spend long periods talking about herself. Well, similar to this show then, really, isn't it? and often spends loads of money on her listeners too, sending them gifts and competitions too. Her latest, oh, here we go. That's it. Wayne is trying to get something for nothing here, I think. <laughs> her latest competition is to win an all expenses paid trip to Oz in January, which I've entered, of course. Plus all her shows are one hour and three times a week. What is he going on about now? I'm sorry, Wayne, that you feel that way. I can't afford to give out prizes left, right and centre, dear. I haven't got one of those 0901 numbers here to make up the money afterwards. If you want a prize, I'll go out and get you something. What do you want? What do you want? Anything to, of, of no expense spared. I tell you what, you can go as far as 50 pence if you want to. And I'll find something, OK? <laughs> <laughs> Wayney and Redden, blooming nutters they are, all of them. Now, uh, let me see here. Here she is, it's, it's Suko again, boys and girls. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're nearly out of time, isn't it? Dear Chrissy Poo, Chrissy Poo? 
Chrissy Poo? Who said you could call me Chrissy Poo, Suko? I realise that you haven't heard from me in quite some time. Well, you haven't got to tell me that, dear. I know that already. But as you know, as a wife... Oh, here we go. Here comes the list. As a wife, mother, manager and chauffeur of a budding prima ballerina, that's her daughter, not to mention writer, radio personality, vice president of the Chinese Centre on Long Island, volunteer grant writer and adoption panellist, you can well appreciate how busy I am since you are equally, if not busier than I. So you can well understand why I need a respite from my interesting but hectic life. Who said it was interesting, dear? Hectic, I can understand, but interesting? Please explain. So I propose the following deal with you. I leave all the frenzy behind for three quiet weeks in the rural gorgeousness of Bracknell, Royal Berkshire, while you're off globetrotting Australia, leaving your home in my capable hands. Hmm. Anyway, go on. I can assure you, you will find no one better than me to handle the job, and you can travel worry-free. I promise that your home will be in better shape than when you left it. As you know, I am no spring chicken. Uh, I am no spring chicken. I am no spring chicken, so I have years of housekeeping experience and I am a great DIY and reliable and loving pet sitter. My cat will be pleased. In fact, I can promise you that Katie will not even notice you're gone since I spent hours playing with her and smothering her with love. Oh, oh she might like that, you know. She might just like that. You can leave long lists or let me see, you can leave long lists of home projects for me to do, including painting, redecorating, building and yard work. And I guarantee they will all be done impeccably. Now you're talking, Suka. I think, I think straight after the show today, I'm going to have to start making lists, lists of tasks for you to perform, dear. Not only that, I promise that you will return home to a freezer full of homemade meals to your liking. No Chinese, Japanese or other exotic foods unless requested. Are you talking home-cooked English food here, Suko? We're liking the sound of that, lovey! And the best offer I can make is that I would continue to do United Kingdom talk for you so your thousands of fans will not have to be deprived of three weeks without you. I will even wear shirts similar to the ones you wear and promise to perfect the signature Reardon accent, charm, and yes, even the noises. Oh, 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 oh. Blah, blah. <laughs> References available if necessary. So my darling precious friend, how can you not consider me for the possession? Just let me know as soon as possible so that I can make travel plans with eternal love and admiration, Suko. All right, boys and girls, I'll need your help with this. Can you write me a list of things for Suko to do? Because don't, we don't want her to be bored. OK, you need to write me a list of things for Suko to do while she's here. Painting, decorating, anything like that. Hedge cutting, grass cutting. We love it. Now, remember, this will be in January, so there won't be an awful lot to do in the garden. Perhaps we can get her to dig up the, some of the patches I have around here. Keep your um, uh, suggestions coming in for that one. And it's time for me to go. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.com. .co.uk, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. From the garden, from myself and my lovely cat Katie. See you on the next show. Bye bye now. <laughs>